guys. So Pete Townsend released his first new single in, what, 30, 40 years? Um, I want to say 30. Uh, called Can't Outrun the Truth, which it's raising proceeds for a teenage cancer trust, which he started with Roger back in the 90s. They've both been very passionate about that for decades. But anyway... It didn't even dawn on me to record a reaction video to this because, while well, for most people they first heard this a few days ago when it released, I heard it like a month ago, so I kind of forgot about it. I feel kind of bad, but, you know, st still being in contact with my empl my old employer has its perks, just saying, just saying. So, got to hear it a month ago have also had a cover ready to go ever since, but I wasn't sure what is the proper protocol, right, when it's a song for charity. If it weren't a song for charity, I would have posted it same day. But with that part, I was like, how long is the appropriate amount of time to wait before doing that? Because I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, so um, <laughs> this song was actually written by his wife, Rachel Fuller, although on the songwriting credits you'll see it is Charlie Pepper because she was insecure about putting her actual name on there because she doesn't feel like people are ready for that yet. She might be right. She might be right. The way that I've heard the fandom speak of Rachel, yeah, she, she might not be wrong there, sadly. Um, I know how nasty people can be, so, you know, do what you gotta do to preserve your peace, but... Uh, she wrote the song during lockdown, which is very obvious when you look at the lyrics of the song. I'm not even sure if she ever intentionally had planned on this being released. I think it was more of just like a cope song. And then ended up liking it. Had Pete Noodle around with it and record it. Add to it and it became a thing. Uh, but the lyrics, while initially may feel like you're releasing a song about lockdown in 2023? Hang with her here. Because while, yes, she wrote it about the lockdowns of 2020, the words also fit for kids going through cancer who are stuck inside, can't see their friends, and that much worse if they had it during 2020 and really, really couldn't see anybody. Yeah, she even, like, asked a, a younger guy that she knew do these lyrics resonate with you? And he said, yes, that's exactly what it's like. So it's kind of a two-pronged thing where, yeah, on one hand it's about the pandemic, but it's also about the experience of being a teenager with cancer and being shut in away from the world while you're going through all that. So the song itself is kind of interesting because when have we ever really heard Pete Townsend do, like, a country-esque kind of a song? Johnny Cash-esque, in her words. I'm not sure we ever really have. I mean, there's a couple things that lean a little in that way throughout, like, The Who's history, but, like, never, like, fully leaned into it, like, this hard. But honestly, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. And hearing Pete on a steel guitar, I was like, oh, oh, that's different. But I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Um, more interesting still, he plays the violin on it, too, which... I don't think he even played violin, but he figured it out for this. I mean, he's kind of like Paul McCartney in that regard. Hand him an instrument, he can figure it out. So, <laughs> um, yeah, he's actually not bad at it, which was kind of cool to see, because if you watch the video, it shows him doing it. So I was like, oh, well, that's freaking cool, because, yeah, had it not been for that, I don't think I would have recognized that that was him playing that, but okay. All right, I respect it. I respect it. So it's it's a catchy little song and everything, and easy to pick up the lyrics to it. Um, apparently the ending of the song, Pete had a little bit of influence over because the original ending of the song was a lot darker and drearier, and in his words, yeah, if you end it like that, they need to have some hope, because if you end it like that, they're gonna want to jump off a long pier. <laughs> it's like, oh god. I mean, he's not wrong, but still. Still, so... The ending of the song was changed to be more hopeful, which, I mean, it's nice, and given the subject matter, yeah, I, I think that's definitely necessary, but, um, yeah, it's just an interesting track all around, and the cover art on it, I have to admit, my knee-jerk reaction to seeing it, I had to ask, 
<laughs> Did Ringo Starr do the spin art for that? But no, it's not a Ringo. Um, I forget the artist's name, but but it's not a Ringo spin art thing. Although that would have been really cool too. Just saying, but. Yeah, on one hand, it's a catchy little song, but on the other hand, does it have sticking power? Is it memorable? That's where I feel like it's lacking something, because again, I heard it like a month ago, I had already kind of forgotten about it, and I feel kind of bad about it. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, that was a thing, and now it's publicly available, so now I can actually talk about it. I should do that, and then forgot about it again within like three days of it being released. Really. Really. But, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's a fun little song to listen to and everything, but is it gonna have the staying power of some of his other songs? No, I don't think so. Like, I'm just being realistic here. I'm not saying that to throw shade. I'm not saying that to be a hater in any way. I love Pete. I love his work. But, yeah, this one, I don't know. It feels like, as simplistic as it is, it feels like there is some element missing and I can't put my finger on what that is. And while some would argue, well, yeah, it's not a Who song. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. I know it's not a Who song. I wasn't ever expecting it to be. I've followed his solo career, too. I, There's a difference. And no, it still feels like there's some element of something missing that I just cannot pinpoint what the hell it is. And it makes me crazy trying to figure it out. Like, what is, like, that one ingredient of the secret sauce that makes his stuff work that is just not in this one? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Is it the difference of Rachel writing the lyrics versus him? I don't know. I, I don't think it would be that, but maybe. I don't know, but something just feels like just a hair off, you know? But it's not bad. It's not bad by any means. I just would be more interested to hear more people talking about this song since it feels like I've heard maybe... Three or four people tops even mention it or acknowledge that it exists. So, a little disappointing in that regard. That's where I'm like, yeah, it didn't exactly make a splash or anything, but it is what it is. <laughs> it happens sometimes, but I've also seen, of those few people that have commented on it, they're like, I hope he's doing an album. Bro, he has already publicly stated this is not part of a bigger project, this is not part of an album. I hate to burst your bubble. I hate to burst your bubble. I would love to see it too. Don't get me wrong. Trust me, I would love to see it. But it's not gonna happen. And then one, I think, was saying how I hope it's part of a new Who album. It's like, yeah, don't hold your breath on that ever happening again. Roger's kind of being a whiny little brat about, but there's no money in albums anymore. We barely made any money off the last album. What's the point? It's like, oh, shut up, Roger. <laughs> yeah, that. Pete's at least more realistic about it, acknowledges that, but doesn't care and creates the art for art's sake versus Roger, who's very clearly only in it for the money. So, I mean, I mean, there's... Yeah, I get it takes all sorts, but yeah, I, I wouldn't hold your breath for there ever being another Who album, sadly, which bums me out, because I actually liked the last Who album. I may be in a minority there, but I actually liked it. Didn't like Endless Wire, I still refuse to acknowledge that was even a thing that happened, but but the last one, the self-titled one, I thought that was good. I thought it was good. It at least felt like a Who album. Endless Wire did not, but anyway. Unpopular opinions, and this is not what this video is about, so anyway. But yeah, those are kind of, I guess I can't technically call it my first impressions, because my first impressions I would have had to have recorded a literal month ago, but I wasn't allowed to speak on it publicly yet, and now I can talk about it. So anyway, that's about it for this one, I guess. So as usual, you know what to do. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe, hit that notification bell icon so you never miss an upload, leave comments down below. Make sure you're following my social media accounts, my Facebook fan page, my Twitter, my Instagram, my eBay, my Reddit, everything in March, all down below. And if you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support it, the donation link, as always, is down in the description. Anyway, guys, till next time. See ya.